Thank you so much for joining us today, guys. Um, it's really, really exciting to have you all here for this panel discussion. Um, and just to give you a little bit of info before we get started. Um, so we're hoping that this panel discussion will help you to find out a little bit more about careers in film. Um, and just to tell you a bit about Eastside. So Eastside is a creative education charity aiming to support you to develop creative thinking through participation in creative activities. We run free filmmaking courses for young people aged 16 to 25, so we can help you develop the skills you need to start developing a career in film. If you're interested in finding out more about our opportunities, um, do get in touch with us. So you can send us a message on social media at Eastside London, um, or you can drop us an email, or you can visit our website, eastside.org.uk. Um, so a little bit about our discussion. So today we'll be hearing firsthand from three filmmaking professionals about their jobs, what it's like working in film, um, and we'll be learning about the range of skills and experience that you might need to start thinking about if you're interested in a career in a similar field. So we're joined by filmmaker Winston Witter, actor Josh Dickinson, and writer-director Anna Maguire. And I'll be handing over to them in just a moment to introduce themselves and tell you a bit more about their careers. So once we've heard from our three panelists, um, I'll be asking them some questions about what it's like doing their job. Um, and then I'll be asking you guys to think of some questions to put in the chat for our three panelists to answer. Feel free to write, um, write questions in the chat as we go along, and we'll pick up on those towards the end of the session. So if something springs to mind, a burning question, pop it in the chat and we'll, um, we'll answer those later in the session. Um, so uh, just a reminder to keep your camera and microphone off during this kind of start of the discussion and um, because we're recording today um, and remember to be respectful of others um, and the panelists during the discussion. Okay, fantastic. Well, without further ado, um, Winston, I'm going to hand over to you to introduce yourself and tell us a bit about your career. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Um, yeah, my name is Winston um, and I am a DOP. Uh, meaning director of photography, cinematographer, cameraman, et cetera. Um, and uh, I got into this business, I think back in 1990. Um, I uh, fell in love with filmmaking because I was a skateboarder. And I, used to, um, I used to shoot skate videos uh, when I was much younger. I didn't really know what I was doing, but I enjoyed it. So it was like much later that I sort of discovered um, uh, you know, that I wanted to get into it, see if that into a serious side of uh, the industry. So um, I, you know, I, I went to college, went to the city in Islington College, did an access course, um, and then wanted to do a degree in film. I never got a place, but before, <clears throat> um, you know, they did offer me a place a year later, I had already started to sort of apply for film workshops to learn. And then eventually um, I started getting work. And uh, it was through this amazing uh, network at the time that just started called Shooting People. And it was one of the first internet sort of like databases for uh, filmmakers. Uh, it was brilliant. And uh, pretty much most of the work that went on there was, it was, you know, mainly unpaid, but it allowed you to sort of get uh, your foot in the door, so to speak, get some experience uh, working with, uh, professionals in the industry so I decided to uh, to to put myself out there as a camera grip and I got into the business uh, through um, assisting uh, other grips um, so camera grip is um, is somebody that usually is uh, working with the camera department so it's all about the camera movement um, so you have this thing called a dolly grip and we you know tracking the camera in and out uh, uh, of shots and scenes and stuff um, and so yeah I was I was Involved in that for probably about five years, um, and, and but I really wanted to be a cinematographer because I was working with some great cinematographers. Um, so it took a while for me to make that transition, but the advent of music videos um, was um, was was happening at that time in the early sort of two thousands, and that was a sort of opportunity for me to sort of get into lighting, um, and then eventually, you know, I could then work as a cinematographer. Um, so, you know, one thing just leads to another. It's, it's kind of, it's about the network that you sort of 
you, you create and that you make uh, through, um, you know, the jobs that you work on and keeping in contact with certain uh, producers and directors and, and other technicians. Um, so that was kind of my way in. And through, um, you know, working as a DOP, um, the types of projects that I've been working on, um, to start with, it was mainly music videos. And then eventually then I got into commercials. Um, and then eventually got into um, documentaries. And I think documentaries is what I really love uh, working on because it was a slightly smaller crew. And um, also, um, yeah, it's just, it just, it just like, uh, there was so much learning, you know, like in documentary in terms about the story. And I really like research and things like that. So I've kind of sort of been stuck in that area of documentary filmmaking for quite a while. And, um, and, you know, had a few um, independent documentaries that I made. So um, definitely one word of advice, you know, like in terms of, if, you know, you want to become a filmmaker, you want to become a director. Um, it's always good to sort of tell a story about something you already know about. Um, so, so I thought, yeah, I'm going to dabble with directing a documentary because I felt I wanted to make a documentary about skateboarding. So um, that was what I did. And I sort of learned on the job, you know, doing that. But that was all happening alongside working as a DAP, as a freelance DAP. Um, and yeah, that, that project had quite a bit of success. And then from then on, I started directing and editing because it's something that I sort of taught myself. So that's kind of where I'm at now. And I'm producing uh, independent documentaries and promos and things like that. Um, but alongside all of that, I was a camera um, I was a, a facilitating uh, a mentor. So I did quite a lot of work for various organizations like the New Direction, uh, the Barbican, and also, also Eastside uh, Education uh, in uh, running filmmaking courses and workshops. I, I just felt it's so important to support the up and coming generations in filmmaking with the experience that I've got, um, because that was what happened in my beginnings. That there's somebody, you know, took the time out to, to train me. Um, so facilitating, I would say, would be my my highlights, really, of my career, I would say, because the amount of young people that I've worked with and, and uh, quite a few have gone on to be quite successful in the industry. It's just it, it really is a great feeling um, to help, you know, to give that uh, a bit of guidance at the beginning and then, you know, they, they blossom and bloom. Um, and, you know, the, I guess the other the other highlights really were um, projects, you know, that I managed to get made, you know, um, of my own, my own documentary. So, yeah, there's a, there's a few, you know, highlights I would, I would point out. Um, it, it's, more, it's more the documentaries that I created that I was really proud of. But not to say I'm not proud of all the work that I've done for everyone else. There's a ton of work that I've done. I would say that the recent thing that I was proud of that went out on TV was um, the Stephen Lawrence, um, Stephen Lawrence Day campaign video that went out in October. Uh, it was a very powerful, very moving uh, video of the poem um, of um, uh, quite a lot of, sort of known faces in the, in the film and TV world who are all quoting the same poem, but it's one poet's voice you hear underneath. And uh, yeah, that's, I would say that'd be my highlight in filmmaking. Um, so yeah, so I'm, I'm still, you know, at the moment I'm, I'm really busy editing um, editing documentaries and promos for people, but also, um, you know, got a few projects in, in the back uh, that I'm um, researching and trying to get, you know, made, trying to raise funds for. So that's where I'm at. Um, and what I could do is show you a little snippet of my work. So I'll, I'll just I'll just share um, a minute of my uh, show reel with you. So just And I look forward to, um, yeah, to, to speaking to you um, after. Thank you.
Fade it out. Uh, okay, that's me. Uh, just get the screen share. Okay. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Winston. I loved that um, surfboarder riding that wave. That looked so amazing. That must have been so much fun to shoot. Um, okay, so we're going to go to uh, Josh next. Yeah, I was liking the skateboarding stuff as well after you, you were talking about it. That looked really cool. Um, yeah, hi everyone. My name's Josh. Uh, I am an actor and um, I've got a few clips to show you to kind of go tracking through my journey to where I've come from and have arrived at. So I grew up in Suffolk in sort of rural countryside areas and did plays and musicals at school. And when I got to 18, I was kind of looking at things I could do and acting was the thing I'd always done. So I thought, yeah, let's give it a go. Um, and ended up going to drama schools to audition and getting sort of cutting feedback from older, more interesting people than me. Um, but then I was very lucky to get into uh, East 15 acting school, um, which I went to for three years. So I've got a couple of photos I can, I can nip through. So East 15 is in Loughton in Essex. It's a really lovely school and was it talks about method acting a lot, which I was very interested in at the time. Um, and so I got to go there. Um, and study Stanislavski and Brecht and Meisner and all sorts of things. Um, and we did some sometimes very serious plays and sometimes some very silly plays where we were doing Christmas shows and then really silly plays where we were doing sort of Victorian music hall, which was all good fun. Um, the one thing we didn't really do much of uh, was film work. So we had two weeks of, I think it was called television training uh, in my third year and it was very confusing for everyone and no one really knew what was going on. Um, I think we did an activity where we had to film a scene out of order and that it just never worked because no one really understood what was happening. We were theater actors used to going through plays. So when we finished drama school, uh, at the end of our third year, we had a showcase in London in the West End um, and I was very fortunate to get an agent at the time. Um, and that was all very exciting. And I thought, right, that that's it now. I've got an agent. Here comes the rest of my career. Uh, and of course, there was still a lot of learning to do. So um, I spent a couple of years doing lots of little bits of things. I did music videos. I did an advert for a company called Game, which promptly collapsed about six months later. I hope it was nothing to do with me. Um, and then the first really exciting thing that happened for me was getting a student film because it was after doing lots of theatre, it was the first time I'd ever done anything on screen. Um, and I will show you a little clip um, from that film, which was called Roots. And it was about a young man who was trying to prove he was responsible by carrying his girlfriend's plant across London with disastrous consequences. And in this scene, uh, the plant has been kidnapped by a van driver. <laughs> So I wanted to share that piece because for someone who came from theatre who was used to learning lines to then be told, could you get on this bike and cycle behind a van and we'll have a camera in a car behind you and hopefully we won't crash you in the middle was a little bit alarming. But it was a really, really good experience. It taught me a lot about the filmmaking process. And then shortly after that, I went to an audition for Holby City. And when I was talking about that experience, I was lucky enough to get that role as well. So I, it was one of those things where I auditioned for them before, I think and they kept me on the list. And I was very fortunate that at that time, the character just suited me. So that was my first proper television job, which was extremely exciting. I got to go and shoot in BBC Elstree, Tree, um, which I'd never been anywhere on that scale before. And filmmaking was still kind of a serious thing to me at the time. And I remember just asking probably too many questions of people who were doing things like Winston was doing and saying, well, actually, are you doing, how does it all work? Um, but it was a fantastic experience. Um, and it opened a couple of doors and got me into a few more audition spaces, which was really, 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 really nice. Um, and then from then I kind of carried on picking up little bits here and there, not all the time. Uh, as an actor, there are far more jobs than there are actors. 
So whenever you're going for roles, you know that there's 10 or 15 just as talented people going for the same role. Um, and you hope to get some interesting pizza, bits and pieces along the way, which I've been fortunate enough to do. Um, and what is, what was interesting about After Holby, though, was that filmmaking kind of, I think when you get into filmmaking a little bit, you kind of go, oh, this is really interesting. and I want to explore it more. And around that time, I started going, yes, I would like to try and do this myself. So similar to Winston, when I was probably much older than you were when you started, though, I kind of picked up a camera and started making things. Um, I got to do a film as an actor where we it was a found footage horror film. And we were responsible for shooting a lot of the content that made it into the film, which was a lovely experience, because even though the footage was probably very bad, it still made it into the film and we were responsible for shooting it. And it kind of combined those two interests. Um, and then after that, yeah, just kind of carried on doing little bits and pieces. Um, I've got one more clip that I think would be fun to show just because uh, the kind of extension of my agent in London, they have some people in Los Angeles that I was lucky enough to go and travel over and meet. And they were able to help me get my first American language role, which was, I say language, I use English, but American accent, um, which was shot in France. Uh, and I was someone holding up a uh, French castle. Good one. No, wrong one. Sure. Maybe we should get. I was so ready for this. And then it's all falling apart. Here we go. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, was I just on it? I think it was, wasn't I? It's all these men here. We go. Thank you. Thank you for your patience. And here we go. Whoever did it, confess. Confess now or you all die. Okay, you might want to tone it down. Your mouth is listening now. She never understood. Life was hell at school. The only place I had a life was online. I understand. These online contacts became your real friends. More than friends. They were my family. So yeah, it was lovely to go and do something in another country, in another accent, and explore that side. And then now I'm doing the same thing, still auditioning for things, getting when self-tapes come in, it now happens online. When I first started, I was going into rooms, but now you get sent an email and asked to self-tape at home and then you send the email off. And then when I'm not doing that, I also have started teaching um, filmmaking and acting. So I teach uh, sometimes with Eastside, sometimes the uh, Royal Central School of Speech and Drama where I teach screen acting. Um, and I would agree with what Winston said, it's always lovely to teach and work with people and try and help them learn things. Not only because it's rewarding to see them get it, but also you realize that you are developing your craft as you go along. Um, so yeah, that's that's kind of me. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Josh. That was so interesting and so great to see you so young in some of those clips. <laughs> um, okay, and um, finally, we'll pass over to Anna. Hi, everyone. Um, so I started my sort of uh, film career uh, as an actor when I was about seven. Uh, I started, it's something I just fell into. I happened to be part of a choir and then I got invited to do one thing and another thing. And then I acted in a a small film, some of you might know, called Saving Private Ryan. And then the same casting directors gave me the a script for Ever After. So I did these kind of films when I was young. And then when I, uh, and I worked a little bit when I was young, but never in a sort of intense child star way, just in a kind of uh, summer holidays was really fun way. And uh, when I went to university, I sort of thought, okay, I, I want to be an actor. And then when I graduated from university, I, I, I started doing that. And I realized that that didn't actually fully fulfill me and, and that I wanted to make my own work and that I was and when I was at university I was directing I was directing theater I was you know doing all these things and I sort of when I graduated I was like well actually this is something I can do and something you know why have I put myself in a box and I think that's the thing with this industry is um it's so often that you end up putting yourself in a bit of a box uh, or the industry itself tries to put you in a box and but as you can probably hear from everyone here we all we've all done lots of different things but all wearing lots of different hats so I started, uh, I studied English literature at university and I thought, okay, I kind of words, I've done some acting and I get this, but I want to understand image making a bit more. So I started working for a photographer and he, he paid me a very, very low rate to, you know, assist him. But through that, he also taught me a lot of things uh, about image making and about sort of visual storytelling. And I made my first short film called Don't Forget Your Mittens, um, which cost 80 pounds to make. Um, 
which uh, I shot with a friend of mine who was a photographer. It's a stop motion animation. And it was about four minutes. And it was all about the anxieties I felt growing up uh, and leaving university. And um, can you hear me properly? Or are you hearing the other voice in the background? Is that you hearing? You're fine. Okay, cool. Just wanted to double check because um, there's a couple of us working here. Um, yeah, so it was about the anxieties I felt about sort of leaving university and becoming an adult uh, and sort of realizing how complicated that was. Uh, and, and it's sort of all through, told through the metaphor of a coat that has lots of different objects that start proliferating and the character has to sort of wander around. And it's really, uh, yeah, it's, it's a sort of small imaginative piece. And um, it, that got into its first film festival, London Short Film Festival. And from that point, uh, Philip Ilston, who runs the London Short Film Festival, gave me a commission or connected me to this commission to make another short film called She Would Move the Tree Rather More to the Middle, where I had about, they gave me 400 pounds to make it, which was obviously not enough, but still managed to figure it out. And then that went to some film festivals. And then I sort of collaborated with another person. We both put, we both worked in a bookstore. So we sort of maxed out our credit cards. I don't recommend doing that, but we, we did um, to sort of make this other short film. Uh, and, and they sort of grew from that. So it was very, uh, I, I, I didn't go to film school. I really, I put myself through my own film school. I sort of interrogated what that meant and, 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 and what, how I wanted to tell stories, which was really, really great and found people to collaborate with and work with. And then throughout that, I was also acting um, in, in theater, but mainly film and TV. And uh, I ended up sort of moving to Canada for a few years and because I'm, I'm half Canadian, so I started working there. Um, and yeah, so, so, so my film work sort of grew and grew. And, and subsequently I've made sort of, Th three bigger short films. One was called Your Mother and I, which was an adaptation of a short film, a short story by Dave Eggers. Um, and again, I just reached out to him and was like, hi, I kind of want to make this. Would that be cool? And the worst that anyone can say is no. That's probably my best bit of advice. So always put yourself out there and reach out because, you know, all, all people can say is no. So and that's, you know, that's sort of sticks and stones, right? Um, so I... So, yeah, and then the next one I made, and we didn't have any money for that. We crowdfunded, made it on Indie, did it on Indiegogo, made it for about $14,000, but less than that, probably $12,000, Canadian dollars, that's about £6,000. Um, and then I made another short film called Constellations, which, again, we didn't get any funding for, which we crowdfunded for um, and got a lot of help from lots of other people, which 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 also which has done both those films did quite well. Your mother and I went to TIFF, which is the Toronto International Film Festival um, and then and was nominated for a London Critics Circle Award and was nominated for Best Short Film at London Film Festival and won Best Short Film at London Short Film Festival. And then, yeah, Constellations has also been sort of touring internationally. And then I made a short film called It's Nothing, which I didn't write. Usually I write and direct, um, which I, but I sort of developed. And we made that and we got some funding in Canada, finally, from an arts council body, which was really great. But even then, the concept was so much bigger that the funding still probably went about the same away as, as sort of the, the smaller funded projects. So, uh, and then now, right now I'm writing my first feature and um, I've been supported for, by various different spaces, but, you know, I've been also rejected by more spaces than that. And I'm currently in a development lab called Less Is More, which is a European uh, initiative for low budget features. And, um, and as an actor, my, I just uh, acted, had a lead role in a film called Violation, which uh, pre premiered at TIFF last year and played at Sundance this year. Um, but again, that, a lot of those things are through the connections I've made, making stuff, helping out other people's projects, you know, working on working on their stuff, then working on my stuff, collaborating, sharing work uh, and applying to 100 million things that I've been rejected from, um, which I think is really important to add. So you, the sort of the small wins, uh, you, you have to celebrate the small wins because I think this kind of a career is made up of lots of small wins. And I guess that's where I'll leave off for now. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Anna. Well, it sounds like um, lots of uh, attending lots of film festivals and things. That's that's amazing. Um, I actually I, I think we'll so we'll start off with just asking you guys a few questions and, and I'm going to throw a few questions out there. But just a reminder to everyone who's joining us um, at home that you can type questions in the, into the chat as we get as we go on. Um, but I wanted to ask a 
a quick question from all of you to just think about um, if you were to explain what a typical day in the life of your role would be, um, what would that look like? What does it involve on a really kind of basic level? So um, I think if we start with Josh, if you want to tell us, yeah, what's a day in the life of an actor like? What does that mean? I was going to say that actors are usually the last to arrive on set, so it feels uh, cheeky that I'm getting, getting there first. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so uh, if you're shooting a film, you'll arrive at your call time, um, probably early in the morning, unless you're specifically left in the afternoon. Um, once you get there, you go into makeup and costume and get yourself all ready for the scene. And then you'll go and wait until everyone else is ready and hopefully just kind of stay patient and calm and focused until Winston's done his job of making everything look great so that you can step into it and everyone can think that it's all your work. Uh, <laughs> um, and then, yeah, then you're into the shoot. Uh, so wherever the scene is, you shoot that, whether it's a dialogue scene, action scene, technical scene, whatever it is, um, until you're done. And you just keep doing the takes again and again until people are happy. And, uh, and hopefully by the end of the day, you've got the material that they wanted. Brilliant. Fantastic. OK, um, and Winston, what's the day in the life of uh, a director of uh, photography? Uh, OK, so, um, yeah, basically, it's a matter of getting up at the crack of dawn. Normally, as uh, Joshua said, we're, we're first on set usually. Um, so, yeah, early call times, uh, usually eight o'clock in the morning. Um, and then um, the equipment van would arrive and then we'd get the kit out, unload it. Um, and then go through all the kit, make sure everything's there and start building the camera. Um, and then it's a matter of then finding out from the first AD um, or director uh, what the first shot is or, 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 or you know, what the shots are going to be, what order they're going to be for the day, what locations, etc. And then start to build the camera and lenses and everything for the first scene. Um, and then go from there. Really. And then we wait for, for people like Joshua and Anna to come and grace us with their uh, amazing acting skills. Um, and then it's, it's kind of a lot of stop starting, you know, it's a lot of, it's a lot of you know, shooting scenes and then we've got to turn the camera around to the reverse and turn the lighting around. So, you know, they, they do their bit, the actors do their bit and then, then they go off and then we've got to go and reset everything and so on and so forth. So that pretty much goes on for most of the day uh, with a couple of breaks. And that's about it really. Great. So you're kind of on the camera all day, pretty much. Yeah, pretty much all day. Yeah. Because, um, I mean, because working as a DOP, um, depending on the job, when you're on drama, when you know, when you've got a big crew, then you normally have two assistants, focus puller and a, and a clapper loader. So they kind of help with the setting up and things like that. And then they sort of check in with you. It's like, oh, what stop would you like? And, you know, um, you know, back in the day of film, it'd be like, what film do you like? But now we're in digital world. <laughs> so, um yeah, so it's just all the settings, the gamma curve settings, blah, 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 you know, all that. Make sure that we've got our dip person who's doing all the digitizing in the background set up, ready to go, got all our cards ready and stuff. So it's kind of like, in a way, delegating with the team. Um, but I like to operate, so I'm always looking through and operating and doing the shots. So, but then when I don't have, when I don't have a team, then I'm doing it all by myself. Okay, great. Thanks, Winston. Um, and Anna, what about you? What's a, a day in the life of a writer director like? Yeah, well, I guess I'll uh, sort of maybe sort of um, add, talk about offset because, you know, we've heard about set. Um, you know, I think it's a lot of self motivation because writing uh, and and sort of trying to figure things out, uh, you know, character blocks or you know story elements that's really hard to do. And, and you know, you have to sort of figure out if, if you're not getting paid for it initially, which very often as a writer, you won't be. Um, you have to do juggle money work and other jobs. And then you have to try and figure out making sure you have the time and the space to dedicate to that work that you're doing and the writing that you're doing. Um, and then on top of that, as I said, applying for things, because it's really important to try and, and, and find those people and find those networks that will support your work and will take that to the next level. Because, you know, there's so much we can do on our own, but it, it, it can be very lonely. Your job is kind of, in a way, twisting yourself in knots to make sure everybody else is serving your vision, not just sort of sitting back and expecting everyone to serve your vision. I think that's the common misconception of a director, that they're just the mm. ones there, that they're kind of king and then everyone comes and, you know, co-toast. But I, I don't think it's that at all. I think it's actually the opposite. You're trying to get the best out of everyone there. 
and yeah to make sure it's all in service to the project fantastic okay thank you so much guys that was really helpful um i would next like to know um can you tell us the best thing about your job so what's the best thing um about doing what you do uh and i'm gonna go to winston first for this one okay the best thing um I think the best thing about my job is really um, is, is painting pictures with light. Um, I think when you know when you get a really nice lighting set up for a scene, um, that that fulfills me. You know, I'm, I'm I'm really happy. Like if it's you know if it's working, it's working with the story, it's working with everyone involved with the director, the director's vision, um, and and then I guess I guess yeah maybe that, maybe that's it. I mean and then and then seeing the finished product. Um, you know, seeing it come together. It's not, it's not every film that works, not every single film comes together really well, but like, you know, when they do, it's real, like, yeah, I'm quite, I'm proud that I'm a part of that project, so, yeah. Yeah, I can imagine seeing your work on screen for the, the final time must be so amazing. Um, okay, uh, Josh. Um, yeah, so I think the best part is and there's, there's kind of two things for me. So the first thing is when you're actually just getting to do a scene. And I think that you have to really love whatever part of film you do, because you only get to do that for about 1% of the time you're saying that's your career. Like so much of it, as Anna was saying, is building up to get to that moment. Um, and all sorts of weird and wonderful things happen to get to there that are dull and repetitive and painful and difficult. So when you actually do get there and you're on set and someone calls action and you just get to do the thing, that's really, really lovely. Um, and yeah, it's the great the best bit. But the other thing that I think is always really cool is just collaboration, like meeting and working with people of so many different art forms. So working in theatre, it's very cliquey and everyone is very theatre-y, but in film, people are so different and varied because there are so many different skills and that's just a really lovely thing to come to a set and be like oh wow you did that from the script that someone wrote and you know all those kind of things so that's a real sort of pleasurable thing. Anna? Um, yeah I think I'd, I'd agree with, with both of you guys um, and, and I'd also add to that um, I get to do something that I care about every day and I feel lucky in that you know the way that my career has gone uh, and the work that I've been doing, you know, I, I, I tend to do work that I am passionately engaged with, that I think is, I hope is saying something about the world that we live in, um, that I hope is sort of offering different perspectives. Okay, fantastic. And um, if you were going to recommend to the people who are watching today um, some of the skills that you think that they would need to be successful um, in the film industry as a whole, but also specifically in your role, um, what kind of skills should they start thinking about developing now um, to help them to, to, to get into this industry that you're in? Apart from being a good actor and sort of learning camera technique and those things, I think for me, it's about learning to be a genuine networker, as in you're not networking just to try and get something for yourself. You're like genuinely interested in other artists and what they're doing, because those relationships are going to be what actually sees you to your next jobs and your next roles. And, and also that works two ways. So if you are genuinely networking with someone and saying, what do you do? What kind of stuff do you like making? then they might come and work on your project, you might work on their project. So that is a really, really important skill. And to be a, just an excellent team player, be arrive early, be there till the end, pick up extra things that need picking up because it, it really counts. There's so many people that want to do this, these jobs, even though they're difficult. Uh, and you do get remembered if you're like someone that is just like, you know what, they're gonna be really great on the day. So can we just get them in please? Great, so a team player, but also quite organized, I suppose. Organisation is, is so key. <laughs> Great. And um, Winston, what would you say? Um, yeah, well, I mean, it's, um, it's your passion, this, you know, getting into this industry. I think it's, passion is really important. So with passion comes, you know, love, your love for, for what it is that you want to do. Um, so it's putting in, you know, putting all your energy into it. Um, uh, so I'm just like, yeah, I'm just thinking now as a cinematographer, photography 
is really, I would say, a, a great thing to be doing. Um, I mean, now everyone, you can do it on your phones if you don't have an SLR or anything like that. But I'm, I've always been taking pictures. Um, I've always been watching the weather, watching the light, you know, and, and seeing what the shadows are doing and, um, and contrast and, you know, all the, all the different sort of weathers, I sort of annotate on it. And so I take pictures as references. Um, and also in, in the same thing as looking at uh, paintings master paintings, Caravaggio paintings and things like that. Um, so all of those things, you know, it says get out and see culture, get out and see uh, other people's work, you know, not just in the movie setting, but also in the gallery settings as well. Um, those things inspire me and, and that's kind of what I sort of bring to the table, you know, when it comes to, um, you know, sort of coming up with ideas for lighting and things like that. It's just, you know, having your sort of notebook of references, so to speak. But then at the same time, as a person, um, being uh, yeah, being an open person, uh, a friendly person, somebody that can like make conversation quite easily with whoever's on set, because um, networking is 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 key, um, as as they mentioned. Um, so yeah, so definitely brushing up on your people skills, I would say. Um, uh, if you you know if you're not a people's person, you will become a people's person because. When you're on set, you know, um, there's, there's going to be quite a lot of people that you need to know and you need to talk to. And through that, you become family, you know. So, yeah. So that's what I would say. Fantastic. Thank you so much, uh, Winston. And um, I thought I'd just throw one final question out and I'll just let you guys sort of, um, if anyone wants to add any top tips for getting work experience. I'm sure that there are people joining us today who are thinking, oh, yeah, this sounds really exciting. I'd like to know how to get start thinking about getting some actual experience in the industry. Um, so if you can share any top tips, if anything springs to mind, I'll let you guys sort of jump in. Yeah, I'm happy to jump in. Um, sorry. Uh, I think there's so many different ways in people are often it's a bit like how long is a how long is a ball of string or um you know people are often say how, how did you get in and I don't know if there's really any way there's not any one path so I think that's a, that's sometimes an overwhelming thing but also a really positive thing because I think there's lots of different ways in whether it's assisting whether it's getting on, on set as a runner whether it's getting into a post house as a runner you know you know try getting that kind of work reading scripts and writing to sort of production companies and seeing if they need script readers uh, writing to directors and seeing if you could take them out for a coffee and pick their brains uh, and maybe then they'd have space to sort of take you on as a sort of trainee or to shadow them on something um film school not film school making your own work crowdfunding making stuff with friends you know applying to things like um like film academy um because you find your people and you work collaboratively so that so there's so many ways in so, which can sometimes feel overwhelming and like there's no ways in um so i i think it's really about trying to find a way that makes sense to you and and, and reaching out to people sending emails asking questions sending a second follow-up email if people don't get back to you. Usually we don't, that's not because we don't want to write back. It's sometimes because people just get busy and things go by the wayside. So never be afraid to send a follow-up. Um, and yeah, just trying to sort of learn as much as you can and put that into action. Um, that's what I would say. Yeah, I guess specifically for my role and what I'm doing, um, it's creating it's creating a showreel really. Uh, that's really most important. I was. I guess I, I come from a time <laughs> in the 90s, the late 90s, where, you know, cameras weren't as plentiful as they are now or, or as a sort of good quality as they are now on consumer basis or, um, you know, that was affordable. So you guys have got it good now with phones and all this stuff. There's high, high end equipment to create showreels and even editing software. I mean, I come from the days of Avid, you know, an Avid suite was like to buy an Avid suite is like 40 grand. You know, now you can you can get a FCP for two hundred pounds or a ripped copy for free or whatever. But and then there's all this tutorials and online. What's that? Sorry, Winston. What what are those things? Sorry, um, they're, they're, all, they're all editing. the different editing. Software. Editing. Yeah, software, the Avid okay. was an old editing software. Sorry, um, and then no, you've no. got Final Cut, which is a, a current one that a lot of people use. Um, so what I'm trying to say is a lot of this stuff is so affordable now. So there's no excuses for anyone technically, you know, who want to create work, visual work, um, 
So yeah, create a showreel, shoot stuff, you know, experiment. Um, and, and then once you've created a showreel, it's kind of you've got something to back up, um, you know, when you're applying for a job, you know, it's, it's really important because most people want to see what it is that you can do, what you're capable of. Um, and networking events, um, you know, there, there are quite a few networking events that go on through some of these databases like Mandy's and, um, yeah, Mandy's another one. Um, uh, uh, then you've got talent manager um, and then you've got um, shooting people still going. Um, and a lot of these people, they have, they, they, you know, they do events every now and again. Um, obviously in this current state we're in, it's, it's kind of not happening in that same way. Um, but what used to happen was, yeah, you know, the networking event would be in a bar somewhere and then you get to meet various, you know, people in the industry and get chatting. What's your next project? What have you been working on? Blah, 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 blah. There's all of that. Um, so there's all of that. Um, and then as a technician, as a cameraman, it's kind of like, then you've got the hire companies and, uh, and they're very good, the hire companies. So where we go to rent all our kits, you can give them a call if, if it's a quiet time, you know, you know, to say like, I'd love to come in and have a look at some of the latest kit. Um, you know, do you ever sort of like need crews, you know, for, for shooting, do you need a DOP? Um, some of these hire companies have uh, crewing companies as well so you can become a part of their crew so when people are hiring kit sometimes they're like oh well, we, need, we need a crew to do this shoot blah 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 so then if you can get in good with the hire companies then that's another way of getting yourself some work um something different to what it is that you're probably you know trying to get you know if you you know if you created your show report you know um yeah and that, that's it really workshops really important workshops um, in terms of getting your uh, experience and confidence together and also building showreels as well. But as Anna said, there's so many different ways and it's like, it's all about working out what works best for you and it all, it's all depending on what aspect, what area of filmmaking that you want to get into and then proceed. Great. Fantastic, thank you. Um, and actually that brings me on um, quite nicely to a top tip that I was going to suggest is that um, Eastside do run uh, courses for young people. Um, so if anyone here um, is interested in uh, finding out how to kind of make those first steps in, in getting filmmaking skills, um, then you should definitely get in touch with us. Uh, great. Josh, unless you wanted to add anything else. No, it was just a really small point that may kind of be obvious, but when I, one of the fundamental misunderstandings I had about the film industry when I started was that it was the same thing you could apply for a job and then you would be doing that job Monday to Friday, nine to five. And those jobs don't really exist in the film industry. It's all freelance and project based. So why are you here networking, networking, make your own work so much is because the people who 10 years down the line will be employing you are the people you will meet along that road. And you will hear from people from five years ago who will go, oh, do you remember we did that one small thing that neither of us got paid for and it, we were soaking wet for 10 hours. Well, now I have a budget and uh, and that's why yeah was why those things happen fantastic that was a really good tip actually thanks for that josh so thank you so much everybody for joining us today it's been really really great to have you here and i hope that you have found it inspiring and interesting hearing about the um yeah, the work of all the uh, film professionals that are here today and um, thank you so much to all of our film professionals and our panel for joining us and um, sharing all your experiences. It's been super interesting.